Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. James Smith Jr. And again, welcome to another edition of the Dr. James Show. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for fighting through whatever Zoom fatigue you may have to be on our, our show today. Each week we say, get ready, it's gonna be a phenomenal lights out show. And we're saying the same thing again today. But before we take off, let me bring in my co-pilot, Shannon Peck. Shannon, what, what's your initials? T-G-I-T? T-G-I-T, <laughs> thank God it's Tuesday. All Told right. you Tuesday's my Friday. <laughs> How are you making out today? I'm fabulous. Listen, our guest today, I mean, we are celebrating women this month. So, I mean, I feel as if it's going to be very difficult to contain all of the personality in this rectangle with our next guest, but we're gonna do our best to, uh, to, to do that. I'm excited. Ladies and gentlemen who are listening, viewers who are watching, do not forget to go into the chat room, ask your questions, um, make your comments. We're gonna do our best during this next hour to uh, get your comments and your questions into our guests. So I'm super excited, Dr. James, as usual. Um, it's, yes. it's going to be fabulous. I don't know how you're going to deal with both of us together. I'm going to do my best to be still, although <laughs> I want to be still prepping to borrow a line that our, our guests use, but some journey. And she has so much more to do. Her work is not done. I, I can't wait to begin the interview. It, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a journey. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be compelling. Yes. I'm ready? ready? Yes. All Always. right. Then, then time to take off. Let me show you a little clip and then bring our guests on. Uh, Madi Still, former public school teacher, eighth grade, turned TEDx speaker, turned author, turned business owner, turned mompreneur. Let's take a look at Madi Still in action. Madi Still, my good friend, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Dr. James Show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Greatly appreciate it. It's good to be back with an old friend. Mm, thank you for making the time because I know right now you're still at your shop. I am, I am. Be Still Nutrition is open until uh, this afternoon and then we reopen tonight. And now that the weather has definitely changed, we are busier than ever, but Ooh. I have some good people. So they're covering for me while I'm gone. Well, you, you took a quick time out to come to the show and I really, really, really appreciate that. Oh, I, so appreciate I wanted to get you on because you have such a journey, yeah. such, such mm, compelling, compelling experiences. But before I go deep into the questions, ask you, ask you a layup, see if you remember, when did we meet for the first time? I don't remember the exact <laughs> year. I can barely remember like what I wore yesterday or what I packed in my son's <laughs> lunchbox, but um, you were my speaking coach and so much more. You became a mentor to me. Um, gosh, you became um, someone that taught me to think big and jump big. Mm. And you're still jumping. Still jumping. But before I was blessed with that opportunity, I attended a luncheon for women leaders. And you were one of the award recipients. And we talked a little bit afterwards and said, let's stay in touch. And it's been an amazing journey since. I've been watching you rise and soar. And you're just doing the darn thing. Thank you. What, what drives you every day? What's your goal every day or what drives you? You know, I think, I think uh, as you evolve as a human being, your, your, your why changes. You know, initially my why was we were financially tapped. We needed extra resources of income. And that drove me to get out of the hole. Um, so every day was, I got to get out of this hole. I got to get out of this hole. And now we're way out of the hole financially. Mm. Right. But now I see that there's opportunity to help other people get out of the hole. And that's what drives me every single day. The idea of, and also I want my son to be proud of the mother that he has. I want him to look mm. back one day and say, my mom was a go-getter. So I'm a go-getter. 
Um, but more than anything, what drives me every day is knowing that there's people that count on me and knowing that there's people that haven't been saved out of their own trap yet. And I want to be that person that helps them out. I, I read somewhere where it says you are a force for positive change. Mm. What's, what's that about being that force? Not just so, about positive change, but force. That's a strong verb. Yeah, it is a strong verb. And I think that um, when people hear force, they think um, a storm of, they think, you know, you think of the, the force of like a tornado or force of a hurricane or something to that effect. I like to think of myself as like this storm that comes into someone's life. And I don't bring chaos, I bring cleanup of the chaos. Mm. So, really, my objective is to be a stand for people and to do that when they don't long, no longer have to be a stand for themselves. A lot of times people, um, they cater to their own excuses. Yeah. And I'm a person that doesn't allow people to live by their excuses. Once I know what's driving you, my objective and my goal and my rationale in life is to get you to that goal without allowing you to self-sabotage the journey. Um, Madi, when did this start? When did you get this mindset of being this force? Was it when you were at St. Joseph's, what was it when you were teaching in school? I mean, when did this evolve? This no, mindset? definitely wasn't at St. Joe's. I was young and dumb and <laughs> I, I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, I knew I wanted to impact the lives, but I always thought it was just with my students. Um, and then through teaching, I love teaching. I love the impact that I had on students, but I don't know if anyone else feels this that's watching this, but I felt like there was something inside of me that was trapped and I was, there was more that I wanted to sing out and I couldn't find my vocal cords. Mm. I was kind of like, you know, just, I was silenced a lot in teaching. I couldn't necessarily always be myself. So it wasn't until about eight years ago that I discovered network marketing. I discovered the power of that. I started to attend different seminars and workshops. I started to attend um, life courses, speaking courses. And I was like, wait, I think I might be good at this. And, and it just dawned on me. And it's so funny. I was listening to um, Oprah's Super Soul podcast. She's <laughs> one of my favorite. That, Craig Rochelle and John Maxwell, those are in rotation right now. And um, it, she, didn't, she did a story on roots. Her podcast was on roots. And where do the roots of your gift and purpose come from? Mm. And she said, go back to your childhood and look at, through in, your, in, in the lens of your past and decide when did you know that you were good at something, but you didn't necessarily know it was a gift? Right. Well, I've always been good at talking. We're just going, <laughs> I was voted most talkative in high school. I was the one that was always getting demerits in school or bad um, recommendations on my credit card. I mean, my, my report card, like she talks too much. She never shuts up. You know, that was me. But look at that now. I'm using the gift of speaking to change the lives of others whether that's in teaching of my team in you know, how I speak at the, at the shop and getting people healthy and happy and whole, my voice is meant for so much more. So I never knew that then, but I do, I definitely know that now. When I think about your voice being bigger and think about your students getting it every year, mm -hmm. then seeing you do it with your TED talk, mm -hmm. let's show a clip from your, your TED talk right now, you blew everyone away. I've seen you speak before, you blew me away. You were doing the darn thing. So we're gonna watch one minute of it. And I want afterwards to talk about what we didn't hear and what went, what went into just getting there. Let's take a look. But no one minute has ever been as impactful on my life as the one minute I watched my son die, or the thousands of minutes that have come after using that pain as a bridge to my purpose. I remember the day that I found out that I was pregnant. I was looking at that pregnancy test and having experienced a miscarriage already, I wasn't just looking at two blue lines in my hand, I was looking at hope. I was looking at a second chance. I went into the bedroom to tell my husband the amazing news. And I wish I could tell you that it was like one of those scenes you see in the movie where the husband finds out he's gonna be a dad and he picks his wife up and he twirls her around and he yells from the window, I'm gonna be a dad! None of those things happened. Instead, he expressed his fear. Miscarriages have a way of tainting 
subsequent pregnancies. 11 weeks, we balance somewhere between fear and excitement. Until I met with a specialist at our 11-week ultrasound appointment and our fears were confirmed, she looked me dead in the eye and she said, detach yourself from this baby. Your son is going to die in utero. In that moment, and as you were sharing with the audience, and can you share with us how that experience has really propelled you forward? Yeah. So the, the title of that TED Talk is um, Persist Past Pain, which is also the, off, the title of my book, um, you know, Discovering Purpose Amidst, Amidst Your Pain. And uh, really, realistically, I'm, I'm sorry, I was like caught off guard. I don't think I expected you guys to share. Can you repeat the question, Shannon? I'm so sorry. Sure. I just want to know how you were able to take that moment and as you were sharing that with the with the audience and as you were experiencing that how, how does one even how do you get to where you are now from okay. such devastation got it okay so um time mm. time, time is your 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 best friend yeah. eventually in the beginning it time it adds to the suffering um it, it feels like it drags and it's slow grief is hard and I think when people don't grieve appropriately, um, it makes it harder for a longer period of time. I really allowed myself to grieve. I, I read Mitch Albom's Tuesdays with Maury three months after my son's death. And mm. he talks about grief as something that, uh, a relationship that you develop. And mm. he says that you have to allow pain into your life and you have to allow grief into your life. And you have to allow those experiences to um, shape who you are. And he said, I never, he, this is someone who was struggling with ALS, right? You know, that was writing the book. And he said, I never ran from the grief. I would mm -hmm. allow it. I would cry. I would allow all those feelings of anger and distress and sadness consume me. And then I would be able to walk away easier the next day. That is truly what I think worked for me. I had to allow grief to consume me. I took time for myself to do that. I didn't justify how long I was sad for. I didn't give myself rules or expectations to move past the grief. And then uh, the next year, my, my son was born that I have now. He never replaced the other one. That's mm. something I, I really want people to understand. When you lose one child and you have another, there's no replacing. Um, both children are still very evident in my life. I started to discover that I loved helping others through their own trauma and their own mm. grief and their own discovering their own purpose. And by giving and giving and giving love, love was pouring back into me and it started to fill that hole. And I don't think when you lose someone, especially when a mother loses a child two days old, I mean, that's traumatic in its own way. There's always going to be a crack there. No Band-Aid can fix that, but it's sewn up. And it allows light to peek through a little bit. It's not, you know, it's always there. And, you know, his birthday actually just passed. He would have been 13. I took it really hard this year and I allowed myself to. And that was leading up to his birthday. And then something happened. So on the day of his birthday, I woke up and I said, I want to be happy today. And I think a lot of people when they're grieving and years have gone by and they wake up on an anniversary of their child, of their significant other or whoever's death it is that they've experienced, it's almost like we feel guilty if we don't cry. Oh. Or we feel guilt for when we don't, when we're not sad. Mm. So we say, I have to cry today or I have to be sad or I have to mope or I have to have this face so people know that I loved this human being. But being sad and crying doesn't mean that I loved my son any less. So I released that guilt and I release and I allowed myself to have power over the grieving. And I said, I can think of him all day. I can wish he was here to sing to. I can wish that I had him in my life, but I don't have to allow it to consume my joy anymore. I did not cry the entire weekend. And that was very powerful for me. This is the first year in 13 years that I just said, I can miss him. I can love him, but I don't have to equate that to a sense of sadness. Yes. Madi, I'm not sure if Shannon asked you this, but where did the name or what motivated the name Noah? Well, 
no one's ever actually asked me that. So you, you got me there. Um, <laughs> but I mean, biblically, right? Yeah. Who, who yeah. did Noah represent? Noah represented um, the salvation of the world. I mean, the, you know, the rain, the, 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 you know, the drowning of so many things. And he was responsible for collecting life all the twos of animals and things and then rebirthing the world. So I think there was power in that name. And it's just interesting how, man, this is, woo, it's a dude. Because I never thought of it this way. But just the fact that I chose a name for my son who was in charge of rebirth and power. And in that, I was actually reborn mm. in my own power. Mm. Oh, did you know what, Jim? You better... <laughs> Ask those questions. Yes. That, was, that was right there. I love that. Well, you like to say, persist past pain yeah. to discover your purpose yes. and passion. Yeah. You are living what you give. Yeah. Every yeah. day. And I think you mentioned earlier that you felt that you couldn't really express your voice while you were teaching every day. Right. But what went into you taking the jump? What went into it? The jump of leaving teaching? Of leaving teaching. I, I remember you talking to you on your last day and you saying all the things they gave you when they sang and they were crying. And mm. But you made You were a mind. huge part of that decision. You were a huge part of that decision <laughs> because at that time, we were, we were probably having at least monthly conversations by that point. And you were just asking like, why are you so afraid? You know, like you're not going to, you're either going to make it or you're not, but you're, you know, it, you have to jump. Your parachute's not going to open if you don't just take the jump. But realistically, it was my husband who kind of pushed me a little, a little nut, I was like yeah. on the cliff like this. <laughs> and he was like, Boop, <laughs> let's go. Um, I was physically sick. I, I got to the point where I felt so trapped in my job. I was having so many complications with administration. My commute was an hour, it was horrendous. Um, I just felt like I was living small. Mm. I felt like there was more left for me to do and I couldn't do it. And every little thing I felt like administration was nitpicking. And you know, I just, I could tell that there was starting to grow, the tensions were arising. And I'm not a person that lives with tension in my life. I don't do drama. I don't have tension. I have great relationships with people. I'm a very easygoing person to get along with. So I was like, something in my spirit was unsettled every day. Mm. And it caused me to become physically ill. I was getting migraines, nausea. You know, I was on the verge of like getting an ulcer. I was like, my husband was like, you have to go for the sake of your sanity. We had already with our wellness coaching, we had already matched my teaching salary and then some. So we were financially settled for two years at that income, but I was afraid of losing stability. Yeah. The idea that the floor would be ripped out from underneath me and I'd have to build my own floor was petrifying for me. And then Derek gave you the, the nudge. He said, it's time. <laughs> and he said, and, he said and, and I got you is what he said. I got you. Wow. And for two years, he did. And then he lost his job. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just went back and forth. Just went back. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shannon, any, any questions in the chat room? Any thoughts? What's, what's happening there? And thank you for jumping in when we had our little technology glitch. But in chat room, what's happening Absolutely. there? Um, I have a question. Um, you had written in your bio that I read about um, being a mompreneur. And I would love... I, first of all, I just love the word, but I would love for you to share with our viewers and listeners and Dr. James and myself what that means and share a little bit with us. Kind of a tricky play on words that I'm a mom <laughs> and I'm an entrepreneur, but being a mompreneur, I think is so challenging. Being an entrepreneur, especially during these times is challenging. Let's just stop there, period, right? But <laughs> add the mom to that. Yes. I am, I am especially this past year, I've been teacher, guidance counselor, nurse. Um, I've been entrepreneur. So I'm blending three businesses around raising a child during this Gen Z, whatever, you know, era. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think that 
mompreneurs are very special human beings. Very special human beings because yes. they are and, just resilient. And then a wife. And then wife on top of it. Right. And Gotta keep them happy. Gotta keep them happy too. Household. Right. Mm -hmm. All compiled into one. Um, I love hearing all about your empowerment and how you empower folks, but tell us a little bit about little body. You know, did you, you know, you remind me of somebody who would have a voice back then because you said you like to talk, but like Dr. James, I don't know about you, but I see her on the playground, you know, no, on the playground <laughs> talking about uh, sticking up for folks, the people without a voice. Did you even do it back then where you felt you need to empower somebody like, hey. Best story <laughs> ever. You yeah. just triggered this memory, you ready? So I, I re distinctly remember I was a little girl and I had a friend and she said, she called me and she said, I think this guy is like following me home. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do something. And I called 911. I couldn't have been more than like nine years old. She like called my house. I have to do something. I called 911. The cops are like following this guy. They're calling my mom. Come to find out it was just a guy walking home. He just happened to live the same way, right? But that my mom was like, you were so difficult to deal with. And she said that I would start a story and she would purposely walk out of the room just to avoid how much chatter and I would scooch my chair behind her. And then, and then, and then it was like, no, you're gonna hear me. And my mom was like, I knew then like you were gonna have a big voice in the world because she said, you never stop talking, never. And when you weren't talking, you were fighting. She said that I, I stood up in the cafeteria on the tables demanding better service from the cafeteria staff and asked all the students to like fill out some pe petition. I was always in trouble. But in my, in, in my defense, I always thought I was doing the right thing for, the, for, for others. So I, I had to learn how to contain that. I love what you said to your mom. You're going to hear me. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear me. And it has not stopped. No, and God has a funny sense of humor because that's the exact child I'm raising right now. Oh, yeah. You're going to hear him, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loud and clear. That apple, that apple doesn't fall far. I'm telling no, you. No, it does not. Janet, yeah, thank you. Uh, Mom, why don't you complete this sentence? If it weren't for blank, I wouldn't be here today. If it weren't for blank, it could be an experience, it could be a person, it could be something that you did or saw, but if it wasn't for blank. I hope this doesn't sound cliche in any way, but honestly, if it weren't for God, I wouldn't be here. Mm. I actually attempted suicide when my son died clear that there was a purpose for me being here wow paralyzing mm -hmm. you have a gift mm -hmm. and it's time to continue to to give it i know you talk a lot about vulnerability mm -hmm. vulnerability and i'm going to show a clip where you give three tips on how one can enhance their level of vulnerability after we watch the clip can you speak to it some more? Sure. Okay, let's go to the clip. Okay, so one is to ask for help. I think too often we're afraid to ask for help because we think it makes us look weak, but in the end, it's what helps us de-stress. It's what helps us um, get rid of all of that built up aggression. And also sometimes the spouses in our lives or the people that we love in our lives, they don't quite understand what we need. So it empowers them to help empower us. So that's number one is to ask for help. Number two, don't be afraid to have some me time. Um, all this week, I've been really focusing on just be still, which is ironic because my last name is still, right? But just being still and just accepting and absorbing that quiet time for myself. I think that sometimes we're afraid to say that we need that time. Okay, and you need that time so that you can fill your tank so that you can fill the tank in others. And then last but not least, number three, don't be afraid of your truth. If you're having a terrible week, for me, it's admitting to my clients, hey, I'm having a really crappy week eating wise. I'm not making the best choices. I'm back on my game this week. Um, sometimes it's being honest with, you know, your spouse and just saying, hey, you know what? I'm not in the best place mentally. I just need some time to myself or I'm searching for who I am and I don't know who she is right now. And I could really use some support in finding that. So just be honest and just absorb your truth and love your truth and expose your truth. I hope this was helpful for everybody.
powerful, powerful. What? I mean, it's so funny to watch myself and be like, oh, that was good. And it's like, it's good. me. <laughs> that was good. Again, one of the clips is on your video. People yeah. can check it out, modestill.com. Modestill.com, yep. Mm. Um, you know, so it's just so funny. God is so funny because I've really been struggling in the last week and a half with um, mental health and um, being still, which is so funny that that came up in the clip, right? Um, Sunday, in let, you know, we're talking vulnerability. Um, so I've I've all, I've struggled with anxiety and depression since my son's death. Uh, was put on a very low dosage of some antidepressants. His five-year anniversary, things got really bad. Um, just coupling grief, new business, being a mom, all those things combined. So uh, I realized that this week I just wasn't taking care of myself and it resulted in a minor panic attack on Sunday. Very out of the blue. I thank God for a husband who just knows what to do. He sat me down on the bed, bear hugged me. We did some breathing exercises. We repeated some powerful affirmations together and it went, and it went away on its own. But I think that that clip shows me so much in the power of communicating when we are struggling and the power of self-care. Um, my husband and I, we have such an easy marriage because our communication is just so easy at this point. And I can literally say to him, I am struggling in the area of self-care. This is the support that I need from you in this area and how you can lend to that. So he knows, I set him up to be successful as my spouse. I love a lot of the videos you have when you feature each other and you're going We're hilarious in your bed. We need our own TV <laughs> show. We need our own TV show. I mean, I think people would watch it, but I think it's really important in life that we set up people in our relationships to support us powerfully. And so many times we're silent in our expectations of others. And then we're upset and disappointed when they fail. But you didn't set that person up with the right expectation to begin with. And I, I always say you have to manage my, actually it was one of my best friends taught me this. You have to manage your expectations so you can discipline your disappointments. Oh, one more, one more time. One more, that was good. Manage was good. your expectations so you can discipline your disappointments. Mm. So me managing my expectation is I know that my husband is not going to do something sometimes unless I set him up powerfully. So I say, hey, this would be, support me today. Do you think you can handle that? He is more than happy to do whatever I ask, but sometimes he doesn't even know that he's supposed to be doing it. So we're sitting there setting him up for failure if I wasn't to set him up powerfully. So I think that video really lends to that, that the need to communicate and to be vulnerable with people. Your, your short clips are amazing. Thank you, you. you. You're vulnerable, you're honest, you're fun. And people, at least for me, they have to feel like they know you and that you're being authentic and that you're not attempting just to get followers or give your opinion of the day. It's, it's really good, meaty material. Thank you. Something tells me that during this new journey of mompreneurship, especially being a business owner, that you've had some, some mountains to climb. You've endured some potholes, some challenges. Do any come to mind? Yes. Um, I have regrets that come to mind. Um, my biggest one being putting my needs and uh, my road, my, my, my journey for success before the needs and the love of others. Mm, say more about that. So about a few years ago, I had some really close friends in my business and um, I was just so focused on getting to the next level, getting to the next place, getting to the next thing that I was consumed by it. And instead of thinking, how can I support these people in reaching their next goal? And how can I love these people? And how can I support these people? I became more consumed in my own needs and my own goals that I basically stomped on them. And I lost those key friendships. And I grieved the loss of those friendships, but it was so great that it happened because it really changed the leader that I became. 
um, the person that I, that I wanted to be for the world, the person I wanted to be for my team, the person I wanted to be for my family, she had to go through that to see, well, wake up, you're doing it wrong, sis. You're doing it wrong. So, uh, I, you know, whenever I see now um, any type of challenge or pothole, I never think to myself anymore, this is happening to me. I'm always thinking, how is this happening for me? That's and good. what can I be learning from this to grow more powerfully in the future? Oh, that's good. That's good. Shannon, any new questions from the chat room or bring in your Shannon shot? What's yeah. up? <laughs> yes, we have, a, we have a few comments out there. Shout out to all the moms. Uh, okay. Moms are especially strong and deserve to be celebrated. <laughs> um, some of their first time here, Madi, so they're saying this is inspiring, especially during difficult times. Um, and then one of our viewers is saying, I set him up to be successful in our marriage. A word, powerful and love totally felt. We have a question also for you. When and why did you decide to write your book on top of everything else? That's a great question. Um, actually, it was shortly after my, TED, my TEDx talk. My, um, I have a brand manager. She's in charge of my website. She's in charge of finding me, you know, different events and things like that. And uh, after the TED, she found me the TEDx talk and she's the one that actually coached me in how to craft the story. We created together a storytelling exercise, which is something that I actually teach in one of my courses. But she, um, she said, I think it's time for, I think it's time for you to write a book. And I was like, what, girl, bye. Like, how, how am I going to have time to write a book? And she said, it doesn't have to be long. It can be more of an interactive workbook type of thing where you have a short chapter and then you have some exercises of work that goes with it. And I like that idea a lot because I'm a person that loves interactive workbooks. I love the idea of reading something and then applying it and journaling on it later. I am huge on journaling. I do it every single day. So I ended up writing persist past pain and um it's very short it's really skinny and uh it's it's more so here's my story now let's find yours here's my voice now let's discover yours so it's very back and forth in that capacity so it was about four years ago mm -hmm. that's good that's good question for you thanks shannon i know you're an advocate for <laughs> health oh, yeah. mental physical emotional, spiritual. Can you talk a little bit about that? That advocacy, where it comes from and what do you do? I wish I could tell you that I was always this way, <laughs> that I didn't eat, you know, Cheetos for breakfast before or something like that, but it's a journey and I had to learn um, and I had to grow into, but I realized maybe, I would say it was probably about nine, 10 years ago. My best friend and I decided that we were going to get healthier and we, we joined like, I don't know, one of those internet type of challenges or boot camp thing where you had to work out every day. And mm -hmm. I, I realized though, in the process of that, how much better I felt and how much more energized I was and how much I respected myself. And I, how I started doing other things well because I was doing that well. And it started to grow into this passion. And now it's my full-time business is, is in health. So I teach that health is not just the body. I, it's mind, it's, it's emotion, it's spirit, it's all connected. So when my clients work with me, they're not just in it to lose weight. We're in it to change everything about who you are as a healthy human being so that you can continue those habits moving into the future. Because how many times do we get healthy, we lose 30 pounds, we feel great, something in life knocks us off and we're done. We gain that, we gain that plus 10 <laughs> and then the mind takes us out. So I, I really focus with my clients a lot on journaling and the mind exercises and um, we post all kinds of motivational videos and personal development because if we can handle this first, the rest just kind of comes naturally afterward. Monty, where does your authenticity come from? I've watched your videos. Most people, when they post, they look perfect. You know, they, they the perfect look, the perfect shape. You have been posting as you continue to evolve, as you continue to build. Some people think uh, posting is, is a beauty contest. You show them Madi, the good, the bad, the evolving, 
where does that candor, that not afraid to look bad or not afraid to be me, where does that come from? I think it comes from a space of, I, I truly dislike the idea that social media is meant to look pretty all the time. Um, I truly, first of all, the grass isn't always greener. Sometimes the grass on the other side is fake. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're sitting here looking at her and you're like jealous of her and how she looks. And meanwhile, a lot of what she has is fake. And I don't believe that the better you look, the better you live. Um, so I, I didn't, I never wanted to be that girl. I wanted to be the one that people related to, could hear and not just listen to me, but could actually hear me. And sometimes I struggle if I'm following someone that is just a little off. I said something off in their authenticity. I can't hear what they're saying because I'm like, something's off with you. Something doesn't feel right with you. Um, I don't want people to feel that way about me. I want people to see themselves inside of me and go, I can relate to that. Or man, she's in a messy bun, no makeup and a bathrobe talking about whatever. Sometimes I look like that and they'll hear me differently because they're seeing themselves inside of me. Are, are there some people, some clients you don't take on? because of whatever or it's... have I ever said oh yeah have I ever denied someone yeah, oh yeah. yeah um I am very serious about my time very serious um because I have such little of it so I can give you money I can you know but I can't give you more of my time you have to I can, I always say this to my, my my team too everyone deserves Maddie's love but not everybody deserves Maddie's time Ooh. so when you are you know, taking advantage of that time and you're not taking seriously what I've offered or you are disrespectful of my time, it's okay. We can go separate ways. There's no love lost. How are your kids? How's your husband? Great. Glad to hear it, sis. <laughs> but you're not going to get my time anymore until you make some changes to respect that about me. And it took me a long time to get to that. A long time to learn that the word no is a sentence, period. <laughs> I don't have to explain myself or justify why I do or don't do something. You know, this fabulous 40, this works. It works. It works. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of working, we're at the segment of the show that we call the hot seat. And right now, Madi Still, you are on the hot seat. I'm going to give you a word or words. And I want you to talk, to think, not think, to talk. So the one word that comes to mind after you hear my word, just want you to say it. Rapid fire. I'm really Rapid nervous. Fire. Okay. <laughs> You're in the hot seat. You're in the I hot know. Seat. I feel it. I got all sweaty all of a sudden. I'll <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> just, just one word. Don't go, hmm. Nope. As soon as it lands on you, no edit, no editing. Just come out with it. You ready? I'll do the best I can. All right. Time. Essential. Resiliency. My story. Authenticity. Gotta do it. Pain. Purpose. Voice. Loud. Pandemic. Sad. Still. Be still. Race. Against the cure. <laughs> <laughs> Mompreneur. Me. Speaking of me, Madi Still. She's made it. You are off the hot seat. Yay. <laughs> I feel like I race against the cure. <laughs> race for the cure. That's again, that's hilarious. As we talk about race, let's race five years from now. What are you doing? Where are you? Aww. You still have the, 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 the store. Um, be still nutrition? Are you still network marketing? Are you still mompreneuring? Are you, have you written your next book? What's, what's, what's in the offing? I see most of that. Um, so first of all, I'm probably gonna have a lot more gray hairs because I'll have a 16 year old by that point. So um, I see, I see that, but I definitely will have several locations. We're actually looking to expand to other locations within the next 12 months. So I do see several new locations opening up. Um, I do see us doing business internationally as well. So that's something that we're looking to achieve in the next two to three years, which is super exciting. Um, I definitely see 
being in the top 1% of where we are, we're pretty close already. So that's probably going to come within the next year. I don't know that I see another book. Um, I've thought about Mighty Minutes. Mm. I thought about something that's just, you know, I, I'm reading um, a book right now. It's a quick devotional book. And I, it, it's really funny because it's, it's for the ratchet Christian that God still loves you. And I was like, that's me. I see me writing something that's relatable, a quick minute that people can just pick up something, read a quick excerpt, get something out of it and walk away. But I don't see myself necessarily writing a longer book again. I just don't have the mental capacity for that right now. But um, I definitely see more locations besides just Be Still Nutrition. And I know BSN is gonna be thriving because it already is. So I'm ready to walk away from her now. Um, I've already established her as my baby. She's up and running two years now. We won Best New Business of Montgomery County last year. We're in the running for uh, Best Healthy Food this year. You know, it already has its accolades and it already has its fan base. It's time to leave that to someone else and open uh, around, you know, uh, the country in other ways. Thinking about fan base, some major filmmaker, Tyler Perry, whoever, comes up to you and says, we want to do the Mighty Still story. What's going to be the name of the movie? Oh, Persist Past Pain. And who's going to play you? It would definitely be Persist Past Pain, okay. right? Or something to that effect. Um, who's going to play me? I don't know people's names, Dr. James. I don't know, like, <laughs> actresses and things like that. I don't... There, I don't remember what this girl's name is from Malcolm and Marie. I can't remember, but she was so powerful and engaging and if if I could ask for anyone to play me it would be her it would be her because she oh man she knocked my socks off with that movie the person I'm thinking again darn their name escapes me I I see her on Saturday Night Live I've seen her in other movies she's funny as I don't know what and as soon as the show is over her name will come to mind but probably Shannon, Shannon, bring, bring a Shannon shot. What's, what's happening? How does one get out of their own way? Help me, sis, please. <laughs> if, I, if not, just tell me for myself. Yeah, you know, I think it depends on what area you're in your own way with. Because there, if, if, let's say we were talking about health. Let's say someone says, I really want to lose 20 pounds, but I'm always in my own way. There's things you can do to set yourself up for support. So one of the, those things I always tell my clients is, well, what kind of snacks do you have in your house? They're like, well, I got cheeses, I got this, you know, I got the kids. I might toss it. They're like, but the kids eat it. They don't need to eat it. They gonna find it somewhere else. They gonna find it with their friends. They gonna find it in school. You can support yourself by only having healthier options. You know, you can have those boundaries that you set for yourself. Zendaya, someone just said it in the chat. Thank you, sis. <laughs> um, but they're going to have other ways of finding those snacks. So why don't you support yourself? But I think the other thing is you have to attach yourself to a really strong why. So one of the, um, the tricks that I give my clients, and they love this when it comes to their weight loss or their fitness journey, because I don't just work with clients that need to lose weight. I work with clients that also want to gain or, or add muscle or things like that. I tell them to get two mason jars. They're going to fill one with pebbles and they're going to keep one empty. Those pebbles can represent either pounds lost or they can represent how many times you go to the gym. Each pebble is one time at the, as a workout. When you've moved 30 pebbles over, you get to reward yourself with something. And we don't reward ourselves with food because we're not dogs. So we have to pick something that is meaningful. So for instance, I wanted to build consistent daily habits. So I created a bingo board of nine things I wanted to do five days in a row. And I had to do each thing five days in a row. And if I did that, I bought myself a new living room rug, a new area rug. Can I go out there and afford a rug? Yes, I can go out and go to get an area rug. But it was the principle that I wanted it badly and I wasn't going to just get it just to, just to get it. It had to be attached to the journey that I succeeded in. So that's just a little tip that to get it out of your own way, attach it to a reward, attach it to a purpose, something that you're fighting for. Yes, so good. So good, Dr. James. Love that. Thanks, Shannon. Madi, how did you persist past pain, if you had any, last year? While many of us were struggling, many of us didn't know what to do with this uncertainty, many of us didn't know what was next. Should we move? Should we get up? With so, everything that's going on in your life. 
the irony is 2020 was the best year of my career. Talk to us. So um, I use it as an opportunity. I'm a health and wellness coach. Everyone's home. Let's use this as an opportunity to get every single person healthy while they're at home. People were like, I finally have time to work out. I finally have time to eat well. Let's get as many people motivated to be that at home. So we created so many challenges, body transformation challenges, things of that nature to help those people during that time. And um, my business tripled from one year to the next because of that. So we, instead of saying, woe's me, we're in this time period, life is so hard. We said, no, we're going to look at this as the opportunity of a lifetime. And we succeeded in that. Now, and then emotionally speaking, my family, you know, I looked at it as this, this isn't happening to us. This is happening for us. So right. how can we use this opportunity to grow closer as a family? So we spent more time together. We played more games together. We got to know each other more. It strengthened the bond that we had with each other. And honestly, I, I was just saying this the other day, as hard as last year was for a lot of people, and B still took a huge hit. I mean, let's be honest, we, restaurants really took a hit last year. So we were in that population that took that hit, but we just looked at it as this is only a temporary smudge in time. Yeah. And we just have to stay positive and get creative and work around it. And the walls of Jericho will fall down. <laughs> just keep singing around and marching around the wall and you'll get there. How did you handle the woe is me people? The people I'm going through it. Oh my gosh. Life I got a lot over. of those. Yeah. I mean, on my team, um, I have a lot of woes me. I had, excuse me, a lot woes me people. I just kept them in the loop of love, kept them in the loop nice. of personal development, motivational videos. What did you watch today? They would come to me with the woes me. I'd say, Did you did you watch your personal development video I sent you this morning? They'd be like, Nope. I'd be like, call me back after you watch that. Bing. They would call me back and be like, I feel great. I know. <laughs> so I it, it's it's a lot of getting people out of their own way by teaching them the tools to get out of that depression or whatever that looks like. And then not to mention fitness helps. That's good. That's the more good. active you are, the better you feel. Do not do, I know the answer is yes. How do you show up as Madi at the store? Oh, what you see is what you get. I am I probably worse than what I am right now on this camera. I'm this is contained Madi. So at the store, <laughs> music is blasting, the energy is amazing. People always say there's something about it. I just walk in here and there's a vibe, there's an energy that I just love. And I'm I'm goofy, I'm dancing, I'm just my my normal self. Um, but I'm also someone that I feel like people just I'm actually today, today a new customer walked in and within five minutes, she was telling me about her sister's cancer, cancer and her whole life story. And she looked at me and she said, what, what is it about you that I just told you all that? I was like, I don't know, because I'm the first person to actually sit and look like I was listening. And she laughed and I was like, I don't know, like, <laughs> that's just who I am, you know? And that's what it be still is like. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about the Noah story mm -hmm. and I know we've talked about moving from school teacher to entrepreneur, getting through that as well. Any other fears? You're, are you afraid of anything? Every day, mm. every day. Um, my biggest fear right now that I'm conquering and enjoying the journey of conquering is that I'm gonna lose it all. That if I'm not working and, and, and just in action all day, every day, that everything I've built is gonna go away. And today, I just heard a podcast about the, the, the need to slow down and to not chase the dream, but to enjoy the journey as you approach the dream. And I was like, man, I, I really needed to hear that, you yeah. know? And so every day I'm affirming my business is growing when I'm sleeping, when I'm playing, when I'm vacationing. I don't have to do anything. My business doesn't grow because of what I do. It grows because of who I am. With that said, if you lost it all, you're not really losing everything because you're not losing you. I could rebuild it again. And bigger 
and better. Yep. Bigger and better. When people oh, gonna hope that don't happen, we gonna knock on that. <laughs> <laughs> don't put that in the universe, right? I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I know you have helped and healed many. Is there one person that comes to mind that came to you looking for better health, mental, physical, spiritual, uh, emotional, and she or he did not look like they were going to make it and they turned into one of your best stories? Hmm. Does that happen? considering the number of people you worked with, because I've seen them on your website, I've seen them on your Instagram, I've seen them having lost a lot of weight. I see their self-esteem, their smile from where they were to where they are. Yeah. But is there anyone that pops up in your yeah, mind? I have a couple people that it wasn't a re necessarily related to the weight loss, although they had that too, but it was more so related to the person that they needed to become. Mm. Um, Actually, just today, one of, uh, somebody messaged me, one of her children is having some health issues. And she said, I got to say thank you because the old me would have probably cowered in fear, stayed in bed, been angry. And she said, but this me is, I feel like I'm ready to handle whatever it is. And I'm ready to smile through all of it. And she said, I don't, I don't know where I would have been if I wouldn't have had you. And wow. that was, that's, that's the reward. That's why you do it to get those types of text messages and to know that this person's life is forever altered because she met me. That's the purpose. That's why I wake up every single day that I want to leave one day. Like Beyonce says, I want to leave my footprints in the sand. I'm going to die one day. People are going to say I became a better person because she was there. Because she was there. Mm -hmm. I want to show one more thing. There are some pictures that we have. And I just want you to speak to them a little bit. Where are we? What's happening? I think we have four or five. And then after we show you the pictures, I got one more opportunity for you to leave your, your footprint. Okay. Let's take a look at the pictures. What's happening on each one? Oh, that's my baby. That's my 11-year-old. We were actually uh, sledding that day, and it was great. I put my phone away. Um, that was the only time we took a picture. We just, for hours, we're, we were sledding. Look at how rosy his cheeks are. <laughs> so you powered off. You powered yeah. off for a day. Yeah. That's Let's a go to the next day. one. So the picture on the left is um, actually um, something we were doing when last year first started. Um, we were gifting free lunches to uh, first responders. So we had like a pay it forward program. People could donate money to first responders and we would mm. deliver lunches for them and then on the right that's just me that's i'm caught in action <laughs> making somebody's smoothie <laughs> and i'm just full of life smiling because i'm at it. a happy place you got that mighty smile mighty yeah smile. what's the next one? Oh, this is great this was at the height of um all the racial tension that we were um facing and the height of the black Lives matter protests i was actually asked to speak at this rally and I share the significance of being a mother raising a black son in this world and what that has done for, um, for me. And I, I, it was actually a call to action for the community to stand up against uh, racism. Love it, one more. We do have one more, we're gonna have it live. Perfect segue, you're there holding that mic talking. You know, cause we work together, that I speak for a living. Yeah. When people come on the show, before we say goodbye, they have to do a mini, M-I-N-I, -I, a mini keynote, where they look right at that camera, pretend they have a microphone in their hand, and bless us, encourage us, challenge us, exhort us, but they share some words. It could be getting out of your own way. It could be empowering yourself. It could be being the best person you could be. It could be jumping. Madi, still, you have a mic in your hand. You have 30 seconds. We want a Madi moment keynote. Your 30-second keynote starts now. All right. So first and foremost, thank you so much for being with me today, my friends. My name is Madi Still. I am the owner of Be Still Nutrition and MadiStill.com brand. And I just want to say that if there is ever one minute in your world that is powerful enough, it is the minute that you decide that what you have been living is small 
and you are ready for the next big step and you are going to be afraid and you are going to tremble at night and you are going to wonder where is the next step? How am I going to get there? But I'm here to empower you and let you know you don't have to worry about the next step. The next step will find you because when you start to walk in your purpose, purpose finds you, passion finds you, opportunity finds you. So this is your, this is your motivation right now. This is your hint to write as soon as this is done, close your laptop, close your book, your iPads, whatever it looks like, and say, write it down on a piece of paper in big, bold words, I am ready. Then I want you to take that on your wall and I want you to look at that every day and I want you to tell yourself every day, I am ready. And when you don't take that action, apologize to yourself that night and say, I'm sorry I didn't put you first today. Thank you guys so much for having me. Boom! Come on! I didn't Boom. even know that question was coming! Shannon, Shannon, are you ready? Shannon, are you ready? Are you ready? I can't. I'm over here lifting hands. I can't even I can't even unmute myself or turn my camera back on, Madi. Uh, what a pleasure to have you today. And, you know, I wrote something down and it says, you know, there are no coincidences in Christ and your name being still is so profound. I get choked up just thinking, but thank you for giving us permission today. Oh. Letting us all know that, you know what? There are still, with your name, times that you're going to be depressed, that you're going to be grieving, struggling, waiting, etc. But still at the same time, discovering your power, your purpose, your impact, and still being vulnerable and powerful and strong. So thank you. Thank you. Still being you. And Dr. James, I know she said to shout from the rooftops, you're ready, but I'm not ready for this to end. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. So thank you for joining us today. What a gift. Thank you, Shannon. Madi, you did it again. Every time I'm around you, you do this. <laughs> Whether we're in a big ballroom in a boot camp at the store, you have that Mahdi power on everyone who comes in contact with you. Appreciate you taking time from the store. I know you're going to run back and do what you were doing previously, but you made time, Mahdi time, and you said time matters. So thank you for creating this space for us today, for us to matter. For those of you who just watched Mahdi still, please go check her out website mightystill.com she's the real deal she's legit today was informational today was transformational are you ready can't hear you are you ready were you ready for that keynote were you ready for the pearls and gems oh gems i like that gems that were shared today we will see you back here next week and like i always say you've just been gym packed